Hi everyone, this is Neil Writer here, also known as The Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I have yet another very interesting case for you. This is of a patient, as you can see, who attended with a left-sided ear infection. And bless this patient, they were terrified upon attending. And I'm going to give you the backstory in a moment. And you're going to see some of this uh, anxiety this patient had upon attending today. Just in a moment, as soon as I went in, and made contact, they were so terrified that they flinched. Unfortunately, I was able to uh, come out of the ear uh, without um, any trauma being caused to the patient. So at this stage, I just reassured the patient and we had a chat for a couple of minutes. And the reason why this patient was completely terrified was a couple of months ago, this patient reported a blocked left ear and they went to see um, someone to have this removed. I'm not going to name or shame any company or individual um, and the person wasn't able to remove the blockage and asked the patient to use some drops for several weeks and the patient did as they were told. So during this time they weren't able to of course wear their hearing aids because they were using drops and the ear was blocked. A month later, um, I think it was a few weeks later actually but uh, between uh, two and three, they had uh, another unsuccessful attempt of removing this. But unfortunately, during that um, procedure, this patient experienced extreme discomfort um, because the specialist uh, was poking and prodding in the ear, as the patient describes, and it really left the patient traumatised. Uh, they were so anxious uh, about having their ears cleaned um they know who i am and they've been watching my videos so they felt somewhat reassured uh, because they've seen uh, so many cases but this patient was told uh, they still weren't able to hear of course obviously after the last appointment but they were told that their eardrum was completely visible and there was just some uh, wax around the edge now first of all you can see this is not wax again the patient just jumped there they were really really um uh, on edge here so again just had a uh, just reassured the patient because um, we're going deep into the ear they could hear that increased noise level and they were getting worried that we may cause some trauma so this is what a bad experience can do to a patient and, and quite understandably so uh, the patient was elated uh, after leaving now so this patient as you can clearly see has got a, a fungal infection i would say it's a mixture of candida because it's quite a thick um, creamy discharge that's coating the uh, the eardrum as well quite often with fungal infections they can manifest deeper into the ear where it's a bit warmer and more humid and moist um, and there's of course some evidence in fungal spores so uh, there, there may be another strain involved here like aspergillus niger for example so but this patient wasn't aware that they had an ear infection they were blissfully unaware they weren't told this and they only just saw this uh, the other person uh, a few days ago now, is it possible that this all occurred since? Uh, you can't say no, it, it, it's possible, but is it probable? No, I wouldn't have thought so. And quite clearly, this patient's eardrum was not visible because I've just removed a thick, creamy layer of discharge off the posterior aspect. Now, guys, I'm not going to be able to remove every little aspect. It's just not possible. One, because it, it, even if the patient was... Um, extremely calm and cooperative even then it just wouldn't be possible um, but of course because this patient's on edge already it's, it's neon impossible i'm just trying to remove as much of this discharge uh, this thick creamy otomycosis and candida uh, possible aspilogous fungal strains off the eardrum and around the ear canal and that's to allow uh, this patient to then uh, obtain the appropriate medication. I, I have written to the GP and requested an ear swab just in case. We don't, uh, although I'm pretty sure it's a, a fungal infection, um, and I'm sure many of you watching this now will be able to identify it more so than this other individual. Um, I just don't want to take any chances, so we've requested an ear swab. In the meantime, they, they have got some antifungal solution drops over the counter. And the reason why I'm quite annoyed because this is becoming uh, forever more frequent now, not just with myself, but uh, with other specialists that I'm speaking to. Uh, I probably won't be um, the one who 
catches a lot of these cases because uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm a lot more expensive than, uh, than most people. So that will deter a lot of people. Um, and I can understand that. That's totally fine. But of course, because of the, the complexity of cases I'm now doing, I have to uh, justify that price. So, But I know a lot of my uh, colleagues are uh, experiencing such cases now. And we're all just getting a bit fed up but more uh, importantly we're getting concerned for the patient's health and safety so what can a fungal infection do if it's untreated because if this patient uh, just carried on uh, and the pretense that the areas were completely clear and uh, the eardrum was visible a fungal infection can potentially lead to a perforation of the eardrum that's because uh, fungal infections can cause thrombosis so uh, kind of a, a clotting of the uh, the blood uh, vessels well in the case of the capillaries and uh, uh, maybe even penetrate into the periosteum, which supplies the uh, the blood supply to the to the temporal bone. Um, so that's one plausibility. And with any infection, if it's not untreated, it can then uh, potentially lead to necrotizing uh, otitis externa. Or typically, with necrotizing otitis externa, the main um, pathogen is a, a gram negative. A bacteria and what we mean by you get two types of bacteria and i'm swaying away slightly from the fung the, the 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 topic of this which is the fungal infection but uh, you get gram positive uh, bacteria and you get gram negative uh, bacteria now the difference between the two is the if i'm correct uh, the gram positive bacteria has quite a thick cell membrane uh, whereas the gram negative one has uh, less thick cell membrane so it's kind of like a one layer of phospholipids whereas the gram positive has several uh, layers of phospholipids surrounding um, the cell membrane but the gram negative bacteria is encapsulated by uh, a, a kind of a thick layer of lipids which makes it more difficult to penetrate so um, they are more resistant to uh, antibacterials um, and they are more able to mutate um, and become resistant to antibiotics and they are more likely to be able to share their DNA with uh, other gram-negative bacteria to become immunised against um, bacterial treatment. So, what should I say, antibacterial treatment. So, necrotizing otitis externa, which is where it's a form of osteomyelitis and that's where the temporal bone gets infected and the temporal bone is the bone that encapsulates the ear canal and on the top section so where we are now the bone on top of that forms the skull base so uh, a necrotizing otitis externa if undiagnosed and spreads to the skull base i believe has a 20 percent uh, mortality rate so this is no joke when we're dealing with ears um I just this evening had an inquiry from uh, an optician uh, who wants to get trained in earwax removal. Can you believe it? Um, so I, I wasn't aware that being an eye specialist makes you an ear specialist. So we kindly, I kindly explained to the optician that they're not suitable. Um, they don't possess the prerequisite skills and knowledge uh, that's required. And this is not a taboo subject. Um, a couple of specialist uh, uh, colleagues of mine have, are actually blaming me. I, I, it's all in, uh, it's all in good chest, really. But they say that when you when you watch the videos, uh, a lot of people think it's really straightforward to do, um, and therefore, people for, um, from all walks of life, or clinicians from different specialities, think it's just a straightforward thing. They just watch the videos, not just my videos, but other people's videos as well, who share it online. And it's just so easy. What you're seeing is a magnified view here, guys. Uh, the ear canal, this is not straightforward. When we enter the ear, it's bendy and it's twisty. Um, the inner two thirds in particular is extremely sensitive. You've got a layer of skin less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness lining the, the bone. You've got the eardrum, which is a similar thickness. So it can be easily be, easily be penetrable. Um, in terms of the diameter of an average ear canal so the, the the average width is about 0.5 to 0.7 uh, the height 
between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9 millimeters. Uh, you can get much smaller ear canals, particularly those that we're performing earwax removal in, because the smaller the ear is in adults, the more likely you, you like to get a buildup of earwax. So, and the instruments themselves, they are sharp. Um, the zonal suction probe that I'm using is 2.1 millimeters in outer diameter. The fine end is about 1.3 millimeter in diameter. So we're having to navigate into a really small space. So what you're seeing is a magnified version. Yeah, so I took a bit of slack with some uh, colleagues of mine. Um, so I've cleared the ear as much as I can, as safely as possible. Going to get this patient the treatment she deserves. And she was over the moon. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care. Keep well. Speak soon. Bye.